So I want to introduce you guys to Georgia Cormack. She's in a lot of the Rugby Bricks video. We've done a lot of training down here at Gosh's Paddock together. Georgia's the halfback for the Wallaroos, which is the Australian women's 15 side. Now, when I started training with G, she's obviously uh, five foot two, 55 kilos. We had to come up with ways of creating more power and energy. So it was a really awesome thing for my coaching and learning how to create more power. But what we've come up is, with is some really awesome body training techniques that all kickers can use to find more power and store more energy pre-kick so that you can put it through the ball. So with that, having a long range kicking game where we need to kick the ball downfield and, and exit really well, it's a really good asset to have as a player to be able to kick the ball a really long way and also take those long range shots at goal. Cool G, so go for a jog and get warm. We'll carry on talking. So it's been a really cool thing being here in Melbourne because of all the different sports. So there's sports like the NRL, Australian Rules, where they use a really awesome kicking game. So in Australian Rules, they quite often do all their kick passes, and that's a kick that's about 60, 70%. Same thing in the NRL when they get to their last set um, and last play where they need to kick the ball. They're doing a kick that still is around 60 or 70%, like a kick pass across the field or a a grubber. In rugby we need to have a max effort so a hundred percent kick that we can use again going back to those exit kicks and long range shots at goal so um, that's why we've put a lot of time and effort into developing this power. Yes we need to have the tight 60% kicking game but it's a real asset to have that hundred percent max kick when we need to pull it out of the bag. So one of the first things we tend to do when we're coaching players to kick the ball is stand opposite of them 10 metres and start with just a really simple uh, bend of the knee and just kicking to each other. All we're teaching is just the knee flick. So then we try to get a little bit more distance, we just flick harder with our knee and everything is out the front of the kick. We're not actually storing any energy in our upper body or using our big strong glute to really get some power through the ball. Hence why we've come up with these body training drills. So this is stage one of the body training drill. Now you don't have to have lines or be at the rugby field, you can do this in your lounge at home. How you line up your feet, so G's got her uh, left foot, her toes lined up on the line, she's a right foot kicker. Your other foot is just floating off the ground, so, so not touching, but in line with the front of the toes. The reason we get into this position is this is her lockout point. So at the time of impact with the ball, her legs fully locked out, hip, knee and foot with a big hard plantar flex foot. So that's really important to have that big hard foot so we can get it up the back of the ball. So within stage one, we're just worrying about the legs so our hands can stay just in front of our body. So the first thing we want to get is hip extension. So rather than that knee bending first, we actually want to get this hip going first. So nice straight leg, G gets her hip, so therefore we get our hip extension, we're already starting to store energy at the back. Then we get that knee flexion, which is the bend of that knee, so let's try really get back. And as you can see here from the video, we're already starting to store heaps of energy behind that point of contact. So from here we just do a three second count. So G's gonna take three seconds to get to that point. So going back nice and slow, now we get that knee bend. From here she stays here for three seconds, two, one, and then returns to home in three seconds. So it's a nine second count. We get through five reps of that. Go again G. So what this is gonna teach us is I'm really focusing on that glute, really trying to get that energy stored back there, and really try to get a little bit more hip extension each time we do it. Another rep G, so really getting that hip extension really well, bit of knee flexion, and then returning home. And I'm really liking how G, when she gets back here, she's got that big hard foot really locking up. This is also gonna challenge that plant foot. You can see that foot really having to balance and work hard to keep her plant foot stable, which is then gonna transfer onto the field. Nice G. So getting into stage two now, we're gonna bring in this upper body and try to bring some real good energy and store energy behind the kick in our upper body as well. So it's called the rodeo arm. We're gonna go into that when we get into the 10 pillars. But all you need to know for now is that it can help us store energy behind the ball. So this left arm's gonna get up, G's gonna get our uh, rodeo arm up. So the really cool thing is this left shoulder and our right glute can store energy. So they can really co-activate behind the ball and then we can put all that energy through the ball. So now we're gonna bring it into stage to body training. So another little bit of detail around this rodeo arm, so where do we want to get it? So if G puts her hand up, if we think that that's 180 degrees directly up and down, we want to be at 145 degrees from that vertical line. So that's where we want to get to, that's where you can be nice and balanced through the kick. Everything else is going to stay the same in stage two. 
So same setup with our foot. So G's gonna get her foot nice and hard, just floating off the ground, big hard plantar flex, foot locked up. So we're gonna bring in that rotary arm. So at the same time, she's gonna get her extension behind her kick in her lower half. Let's go G. So drawing back slowly, that rotary arm's gonna get up nice and strong as well. So as you can see already, we've got great extension through this left shoulder and this right glute is really working hard. Again, that co-activation we can get through the ball. G returns home, that rotary arm comes across her body at the time of impact when that uh, foot is hitting the ball our radio arm is directly in line with our target let's go again G good energy stored not rushing anything so that three second count she comes back to the ball radio arm comes across her body and at the time of impact with the ball lines up with her target three two one three two one three two one Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. So now we get into stage three. So G's going to store this energy and now let it come out with the momentum. Now G uses the hop style technique, so you'll see that get through on her plant foot. But same thing, we're going to get our three second count back. We're going to hold for three seconds and let that momentum come out. Start relatively small with this, so 60% with your momentum and your follow through. So this is what it looks like. So three, two, one. We're going to pause here for three, two, one, and then let that momentum come out through to target. And go again. So let's go again. Three, two, one. Good energy stored. Three, two, and then let that momentum flow through. Beautiful. So stage three can be quite a complicated movement, putting it all together. So I like to work from 50%, 75, and then into 100. So all that means is from here, I get my plant foot set, big, hard, locked up foot. I'm just going to go to 50% of the movement. So a little bit of extension, a smaller radio arm, and just be happy hopping through on that plant foot. So getting used to that movement. So G's going to get through the three reps. She's going to start off at 50%, so nice and small. So a little bit of extension, good radio arm. And just get the body used to that hot motion and getting used to that technique. So let's go 75% G, so store a little bit more energy and then get through to target. Nice, same thing, we want that rodeo arm nice and line with target and then coming across our body. Awesome. I really um, suggest, encourage. encourage. Nice. So that's the three stages of body training. I'd really encourage you guys, coaches or players, to use this with your playing and with your techniques. So again, the common error that I see is we do just focus on that knee flick without actually storing energy behind the kick. This way it's going to tell your body before a kicking session exactly what muscles we want to turn on so that we can get more power and distance through our ball.